Yeah, I grew up in the Ottawa Valley, uh, moved here when I was in grade one, and uh, moved here because my dad bought a radio station, he bought CKOB in Renfrew. And I was never really interested in radio when my dad owned the radio station because uh, it was like working on a farm. You had to go home and do chores. Now my chores were, you know, stacking records and going to the fair to hand out ballots and things like that, but I never really enjoyed it. Uh, and when my dad actually sold the radio station, um, the next owner actually hired me to work in radio and they paid me. And that sort of changed my perception. All of a sudden, I really actually started to enjoy radio and I had been going down the TV route. And I liked TV, but what I didn't like about it at the time was I needed to depend on everybody else. Like you needed a lighting guy, a sound guy, and someone directing. And I got into radio and all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, I'm in charge and I, I can do what I want when I want. And I, I really like that about it. So that's sort of how I got into radio. And from there, I just sort of blossomed and, and found my path and went from working at uh, radio stations in Toronto, like CFRB 1010, which at the time was the biggest radio station in the country, um, to managing radio stations in Owen Sound and working in Chatham and becoming a consultant which that just led me right back to the valley at one point where I said look I kind of learned all these skills and I know this great little place in the world that could use these skills and uh, I moved home and that's how sort of my FM sort of came to be. Um, it started out as I was doing a lot of traveling and my wife and I were about to have our first child and I didn't want to be traveling anymore and I had thought about maybe buying an M&M meat store and I thought, you know, that's kind of nice, but I don't know if I'm a hand you a box of Nanaimo bars all day kind of guy. Like I like having freedom and doing creative things. Um, so that's sort of when I made a decision where like, hey, well, I've been doing radio and I understand radio sales. I understand programming and the engineering aspect of it. So um, let's just start a radio station in Renfrew because it had disappeared. It no longer existed. Um, so that's kind of how it started that like it would be something for us to build a little business that might keep me off the road consulting as much as I had been doing. Um, but once we got started, it really sort of became obvious that we could build something bigger. And Pembroke was really a key part of that because when we put Renfrew on the air, some of our big reaction actually came from Pembroke. And the reaction was, when can we have a station like that? And that's not to say anything bad against our competition because they do a fabulous job. It's just, you know, people like variety. And if, you're, if you don't like country music or if that's not your jam, having an alternative would, would be nice. And you got to remember back then it, there wasn't satellite radio, there wasn't internet radio, there was just literally what you turned on in your car. But the, the core foundation of what My FM was going to be, we always sort of built it on the belief of a little girl at the end of a laneway waiting for a bus that wasn't coming. And we wanted to be the one to say, bus isn't coming. Um, you know, certainly you flash forward to today, to 2023, and you know, that's not as big a part of what we do today, but it was back then. And that same sentiment of how do we answer a question that someone in town wants to know at a time when they need to know it, that's really what we do so that you know we, we put all a lot of resources into news and information um, that a lot a lot of our competition no longer do unfortunately um, and you know that was sort of the antithesis of you know what does this my fm brand means it means we're the guys out there answering the questions yeah we play music yeah we do fun things but we also look for problems in our community that we can help be a solution to we sat down very early and we create it what we call our strategic objective, which is it's a one page document. Everyone in our staff has a copy. We revisit it once or twice a year. And it basically says within 10 years, here's what this company is going to be. And when we first wrote it, when we had six staff, everyone thought we were insane because they're like, John, we, we don't even know what we're doing. Like, how can you say we're gonna have multiple stations and do millions of dollars in revenue? Um, but we all work towards it and we've re rewritten that document two or three times. Our current goal um, will be met this year, three years early, and we went through a two year pandemic. So um, in that sense, in a business sense, it's, we've always delivered on what we plan to do. From just a, you know, a guy who, you know, wants to run a business, 
you know, it blows me away sometimes when I look at what we accomplish in a day. Um, you know, you read the thank you letters or, or you just meet someone that goes, oh, hey, that's cool. Um, the story I always tell people is um, I'm not a big radio industry fan. Like the radio industry is, it's not my favorite industry anymore because they're just, what we do is so different. Um, and I went to this big radio industry conference in Toronto. And as I was driving back, I was thinking to myself, I don't know if I want to be in radio anymore. Like I was having that kind of, we all have that moment where like, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And I was in Kaladar and I pulled up to get gas and I was driving station vehicle. And I pulled up in Kaladar and it was nine o'clock at night, it was raining. And as I was there pumping the gas, I'm thinking, do I really want to do this? Like, this is crazy. And a guy pulled up beside me and he goes, hey, you from my FM? I said, yeah. He goes, I gotta tell you, I've been working in Pembroke all week. Great radio station. And he goes, I live in Napanee and I love the Napanee My FM. Great, unbelievable, thanks. And he got and went about his way. And I got back in my car and I said, I'm in the middle of nowhere at nine o'clock at night in the middle of the rain, contemplating my life. There's one other guy. He doesn't just love one radio station. He loves two. And I'm like, wow, like, like we meant something to that guy. Like we helped make his work day better. And I was like, that's cool. Like, so when I think of the dream, I, I say to my staff all the time, the number one mistake I have made is I wrote down a goal to say, let's do this much within the 10, next 10 years. And I probably should have dreamed bigger. I probably should have said 50 stations, 60 stations. I always kind of kept it safe because I don't know if I want to manage 50 or 60 radio stations. But when I see what our team can accomplish, I really feel like maybe I'm holding them back. Like maybe I should unleash these people because maybe they could do some incredible things. But I think as a business that I think impacts the community, and you know, I think people in Pembroke and the Valley, I know they appreciate what we do, but it's that across the province. And uh, I sit there and I go like, hey, what else could you ask for? Like when, when people appreciate uh, what you've built, that's the greatest compliment there is. Look, I think I can go back over almost 20 years and think of uh, just incredible moments where someone said problem and someone else said solution. And that happens every day. Uh, and it's, it's not just our managers, it's our, our news people, it's our announcers, uh, it's our admin people. Uh, like I, I just think back of some of the incredible things we've done and you know, I mean, they weren't my ideas. They were, they came from, you know, our best ideas. I say this all the time, you know, our best ideas come from our people. And if they're on that mission and they understand the mission, you know, they want to go there and they do, you know, someone would say, well, it starts at the top. It starts with the mission. Um, but like, it's easy to say, Hey guys, let's, let's, let's strive to be the best. Let's help out the community. It's actually easy to say it's harder to do. And the fact that our team, not only believes in the mission, but delivers on it. And look, we're not perfect. We make mistakes too, um, but we win more than we lose. Uh, when I see them doing that, like there's, I mean, I feel like a, you know, a proud parent. Um, I love seeing, you know, we've had staff uh, that leave us, but I can't think of anyone who's left us that doesn't go on to something that is six or seven or eight times level higher than where they would naturally go next. Uh, you know, like we have people that leave our newsroom, but they go to, you know, CTV News, um, you know, in, in Winnipeg or in Kitchener, like big markets. Um, so we're super proud of the people that, you know, we have people that leave and they start their own business. That's awesome. Um, so all the people that have been part of our adventure, you know, certainly thank you to them. Uh, and, you know, we have a lot of people that have been here, you know, 20 years. So, uh, you know, we can't do it without them. So. I think everything, every business owner in the room will probably agree that at the end of the day, uh, without a good team, you know, it's just an idea, right? So they kind of made the dream come true.